Hi everybody, Fintan here from Damson. This week I want to talk about shared drives and more importantly, how to make your shared drive secure. So let's get into it. Previously, we've talked about the difference between my drive and shared drive. And there is a big difference and it's one of our most popular videos. So what I want to cover in this video is when you're setting up a shared drive, how to make it as secure as possible and some of the key security settings for both end users and administrators. Now, before I get into it, I want to just talk about the different access levels because that's probably the first area within a shared drive that you can set permissions. There are actually five different access levels. The first is a viewer and a commenter. They're kind of self-explanatory. A viewer can view all the files, a commenter can obviously view but also comment on files. Now the uh, one that's a little bit unusual is the contributor. A contributor can view files and comment in files, they can also make edits and approve and reject suggestions within files and they can also create and upload files and folders but they can't add or remove members and they also can't move files or add folders and they also can't delete files or folders. Now, a content manager, which is a next level up, can almost do everything that the full uh, controls have, which is a manager, but they can't add or remove members. So what we find in most organizations is that content uh, managers tend to be maybe team leaders or, or uh, managers within an organization or within a team, and then the rest of the team are probably contributors um, with you know certain, uh, maybe outsiders being commenters or viewers. Managers tend to be left to um, maybe a senior manager or perhaps even just IT administrators. So that's the different access levels and I wanted to kind of cover that before we got into the actual shared drive itself. Now, when I look at my shared drives, I'm in my uh, Dams and Training account here. Um, we can see I have all my shared drives here. I've created one called Dams and Training Docs. You can just create a shared drive by, by selecting shared drives up at the top and selecting new and that will actually create a new shared drive for you. Um, when I go into my dams and training doc I can see I've got a couple of um, folders within here but the permissions are managed at the shared drive level okay you can't actually set permissions at the moment for individual uh, subfolders. So when I look at the, uh, sh the, the drop down menu here, you can see I can add members, I can manage the current members uh, that are within here. So if I go and I add a member, um, and if I go to add uh, Maria's account here, I can actually decide what level of permission I could give her. Do I want her to be a viewer, a commenter, a contributor, a content manager, or a manager? So they're the sort of five levels of permissions that I can give someone. Now, when I, when I look at the manage members, I can see that there are four members within this shared drive currently. Uh, myself, Donald, Raheem, and Sandra. And I can change the permission levels uh, that each of these individual uh, users have. However, what I kind of wanted to cover was the shared drive settings themselves. Now, the shared drive settings are quite interesting because this actually allows you to set some additional restrictions on what the uh, users or the members of the shared drive can do. So this first one here says sharing outside of Damson or sharing outside of your organization. And this means that I can actually say that only users within this shared drive uh, can actually access these files. So if I edit this one, um, I can say, are people, people outside of Damson or outside of my organization allowed to be given access to this shared drive? If I don't want them to, I can select this one, which is what I've done, and I've restricted it. So that's quite interesting because that means if you had highly confidential information that you didn't want shared outside, uh, outside the organization, you could place it into this shared drive and you could restrict that specific shared drive. So again, this isn't across the organization, this is the shared drive itself. Do I want only members of this shared drive actually to be able to access files within it? So maybe it's so confidential that only these specific people in the organization like the HR team or the executive team can access these specific files or folders. So that again is another level of security. And the final one is the download, copy and print. And this, this prevents viewers and commenters from having the ability to download, copy or print uh, files uh, or, or folders, um, sorry, documents within this particular shared drive. So what I've done is I've set the permissions specifically for uh, Sandra Jones uh, to viewer. So I'm gonna jump to Sandra's account. Uh, and when we go into the shared drive, 
uh, from her perspective. So I'm in Sandra's account now. Uh, and we go into a particular document. So if we go into the training documents, I can open up the little test doc. I will not be able to print, share, or download uh, this particular file. So we can see here in the top left corner, I don't have the ability to print it. I don't have the ability to make a copy and I don't have the ability to download it. And when I go into the sharing permissions, I can see who is uh, who has access to the file, but I can't edit or change any of these. Uh, I can, if I want, request additional access from one of the managers or, or uh, content managers uh, of this particular team drive. So it means that you have the ability to make those kinds of restrictions when um, setting up your uh, specific shared drives. So that's it from the end user perspective, but I do want to cover from for administrators uh, what controls that they have. If you're not an administrator, you're probably going to want to turn off now. Now, in the administrative control panel, you can do a search for shared drives, uh, and it will it will come up with the uh, with the the, the shared drive uh, section. It just logged me out, so I'm just going to sign back in here. And when you get into the shared drives, you can actually set the permissions on a global level, either for the entire organization or indeed for a, a group. Uh, within the organization, depending on how you manage it. So when I go into manage shared drives, um, what I can do is I can manage these specific shared drives and I can change some of those permissions that I spoke about um, on, on, on those uh, shared drives. But what I actually wanted to cover was the global settings themselves. So I'm just gonna go into the shared drive settings here, manage shared drive, shared drive creation. Okay, so in the shared drive creation section, it's going to be bring me into the Google Drive, Google Docs area, and I can I can do it on an org le level. So those of you who are administrators will be familiar that, that Google manages things by organizational unit, uh, or you could set it across the whole organization. And when I edit this shared drive creation, I have a couple of different settings in here. So I can prevent users from actually being able to create new shared drives. So maybe only IT can create the shared drives. Um, I can prevent full access members from modifying the shared drive. I can prevent uh, people outside of Dams and Cloud from accessing files in any shared drive across the whole organization, prevent non-members of the shared drive from accessing files in the shared drive. So again, these are the same permissions we had on the, on the individual shared drive, but now I'm able to set them across the whole organization. And again, the preventing of the comment or viewer from downloading, copying, or, or printing. Uh, um, anything in the, the shared drive. So, so we can set it on a global level or we can set it on the individual shared drive level. Uh, and I think that that's, that's quite interesting. There are some other share settings uh, to do with, with Google Drive in general. I'm not gonna get into those uh, within this. There is one last area that I want to mention, which is when you have a shared drive that you can see within your list of shared drives and it has a key on it. So this one here, this editorial team demo one. That means that the shared drive is not owned by your domain or your organization. And again, if I'm talking about security, I think that's kind of an important one to note because often customers will ask us, what does that little key mean? So if you see a little key on it, that means that someone ha external has shared a shared drive into you. So in this example here, it's damsandcloud.com has shared it into Dams and Training, which is our sort of test domain that we have. And so anything that I place within there if I have permission to move files and folders between um, shared drives, which not everybody does, but if I look at my little training doc, and if I move that into the editorial one, depending on the permissions I have, um, it's letting me know that this action can't be undone and that I'm actually um, going to transfer ownership over uh, to dancingcloud.com. So that's quite interesting because I, um, I don't have permission, it's giving me an error, here, error message here. I don't have the permissions on, on the editor one to do that which is good. Um, so you can obviously set permissions to restrict that from happening. But if I did, I would actually be able to, if I was a full admin on both accounts and I had full access on both shared drives, I could transfer files out of the organization. So just something to be aware of. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this week's update. Is there anything uh, within shared drives that you have questions about or that you're unsure about or that you think that we should have covered when it comes to shared drive security?